hello and welcome to another tutorial from more ICT in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to um, create a timer based animation using WPF and C sharp so in this case here let's just take a look at what I've done so we have a purple rectangle that's moving left and right and then we also have the a red rectangle which can be moved using the keyboard so I can press left to go left right to go right up and down as well uh, at the moment there's no collision between the two so this is just a sample uh, project to show you guys how the movement how we can actually achieve these kind of movements inside of wpf and c sharp so let's just get started on it so make a new project okay so let's call this project timer and keyboard more ict click create okay so this is the blank project here so now if I go and uh, change the timer here, so say the timer can be, sorry, if I go here and change the main title, so I change that to keyboard movement with timer or ICT. Okay, and change that grid to a canvas because the canvas allows us more fluent movement than the grid. Okay, uh, inside the canvas, let's give it a name called my canvas uh, give this one a background of light blue I say enable the focusable option so when the program runs the canvas is uh, the program is able to focus only on the canvas okay so we're going to give the key down event here so say key is down like so and then we'll link the key up as well Okay, let's say key is up. Right. So we'll get to those events in a minute. Let's make the rectangles that we need. So let's be the first rectangle, call this one player. So set the height to 50, the width to 50, fill, we'll give you a red color. Okay, so say canvas dot left is going to be like 20. So that's the location of the player. Canvas the top top is 50 here. That's fine. So if you just so that's the player character there. So while the line is selected, I can just press Control D. I can just then I need to rename this one because right now there's two players. Rename this one to box and then change the fill to say purple. So without defining the left and top, we can just drag that over to here. Okay, so we just want this one to balance between the two borders. Okay, so let's go and right click on the keys down option here. Say once you right click, say go to definition. That will add the event there for us. And then when you go to key is up, it will add the event as well. So let's go and say using system dot windows oh, windows dot threading. Okay. So by using the threading namespace here, we're actually importing another class inside of it called dispatcher timer. It works exactly the same way as the time, normal timer that we we would use. Okay, so let's go and now let's create a new instance of that timer here. So okay, so with that being done, now let's go and add the variables that we need. So say bool, go left, go right. Go up, go down. So these are all four direction booleans for the player. So int player speed, set that to eight. Say int, and then this is again just going to be the speed for the box. So we can just call it speed and set it to 12, let's say. Okay. And now it's time to create a new instance of the timer that we need. So this patch of timer. So this only works when we have this line there okay so let's say call this one game timer okay so as you can see this line has become white now there so that means that we have uh, we are using the namespace so there's a couple of things that we need to do first so first one is uh, let's write a few line of code inside the constructor so it sets it up for us as soon as the game launches okay the first one is my canvas uh, we need to say to the program that this is the only element that we want to focus on when the game runs so we're going to say my canvas.focus right there 
now let's go and set the game timer so say game timer dot tick plus equals game timer event event okay we'll add that one in a minute so the plus equals basically means we are linking a event to this timer so every time it ticks it will be running in this event here okay so game timer dot interval so how often do we want it to tick it's going to be from time span dot from millisecond okay we want it to run every 20 milliseconds there and then the lastly we're going to start the game timer so let's start it up okay so um you can let visual studio help us add this event so if you just hover over your mouse there and then just say show potential fixes Okay, and then I can just double click on the first one. So you kind of just added the event for us. Now, if uh, for some reason your Visual Studio doesn't do that, then you can just simply type up these lines here. So private void game time event object sender event arguments and then E. Okay, so by doing that, you'd achieve exactly the same result as long as this name and that name is exactly the same. Okay. So with those being done, let's go and focus on the keys down and keys up first, and then we can move into the timer. So here, let's say if dot key equals equals key dot left. Okay, then we just say go left set to true. Key dot right. Right is set to true. Key to up. Go up is set to true. If go down, then we just say go down is equals to true. If okay, so the key is down, is up is going to be reversal of key is down. So we'll set this to false. So now let's go jump into the timer. Some of the syntaxes are a little bit different moving over from Windows Form to WPF. So let's just take a look at how they are different. So say for example, if you want to move the player towards left, we can say if the go left is equals true, which is fine. Now we also just check and. So here is where it's different. So um, usually you would be able to check if player dot left is less than uh, zero or greater than zero but in WPF we can't do that so what we have to do is we have to call a get left function and then pass in the value for the player and then that can check where that left position is of that certain character so the way this works is we go to canvas and then we can say get left to the brackets and then you place player inside of it so now that will get the left position for the player and then that we need to check say if the left position is greater than five right now uh, to move it is also different so now we need to say canvas dot set left right and then we need to pass in the value for which object we want to set the left for as the player at the moment and then where we want to set it to right so as you can see it says ui element and then double the length so let's go and find out where we want to set it to so let's go and say canvas dot get left right so we go get the le current left of the player first and then we'll say minus player speed okay so that way if the player is currently still five pixels away from the border we can still move it towards the left okay so I think we can sort of try this out okay, so see if the player is there I can still move it slightly towards the left so if we move the player away a little bit so try that out so if i press left it moves the player towards left of the screen okay 
Uh, it's going to for the do the same for the rest. So if say go right is equal to true, and converse get left. This player. Uh, this time around it's going to be plus. Say player do width plus twenty. So, you know we don't want the whole object to go past the window. It's going to be less than application dot comment dot main window. The width. Okay. So it's just calculating dynamically what the width of the window is. And then what we can do is now we can say canvas dot set left. Actually, it would be easier to copy and paste this line instead of typing it up. So if you copy that and just change that to a plus, right? So that way, this is going to move the player this way, and this is going to move the player towards the right. Okay, so let's do another if here. The if go up is equals to true, right? And Converse to get top this time, right? So get top obviously player, and then we get top is still greater than five, okay? And then what we can do is we can say canvas dot set top like so. We pass in the player object first, and then we go get the top of the player position. Okay, and then we say minus player speed. Okay, let's just go to the last one, which is the go down. Say canvas dot get top right plus player dot height plus thirty is still less than application dot current meaning the dog this time right Put the, to pass in the player variable instead of the get top okay so if that is the case then we just we can move the player downwards so let's just move it down so if we were to run the app now let's find out what it does Okay, so right now I can move it down. Okay, it stops there. Move it up. Stops here. This way. It's good. It was a bit. I think we're probably missing like about a few few pixels there. Also, to try times two. So that way, it's got enough thing there to stop. Move it down. That's not bad, that would do. Okay, so at least it's not leaving the scene. Okay. All right, that's fine. So now we got the player moving. Now it's just time to move the box. So to move the box, we kind of can move the box by copying one of the lines here. And then you just need to change a few things. So change the player to a box. That one to a block box as well. And then this one, we can change that to speed. Okay, now um, at the moment, obviously, this one doesn't have any limits. So if the box kind of moves away from the left, it's just going to keep leaving. So we need to set it so the speed gets reversed when it hits the boundary. So we can say, um, just copy this line here. Canvas dot, let's say if it's less than five, so canvas dot get left. Box's left position is less than five, or right plus. Um, box dot width of so the brackets there. So it's a box dot width times two. What well, is greater than vacation? Just copy that line there. Okay, so if it's less than five from the left and if it's greater than the width of the form. Then we can just say speed equals to minus speed. Okay, and then now we, if we start it, we should be able to see the purple box is now moving back and forth. 
Okay, and you can also at the same time run this as well. So I'll run the mass way. Okay, so some of the core differences we've discussed here with the Windows form, and we have used a you know the namespace to sort of invoke the dispatcher timer and use that to our advantage to move things a little bit more smoother inside the canvas. Okay, this is actually one of the reasons I really like uh, WPF is because the rendering is a lot better than Windows Form and there's a lot more that we can do. So this is just a stepping stone into the new series on um, we'll look over a few of the game development techniques and by making a few smaller games. So stay tuned and I will see you on the next one.